What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, so I don't really talk about the NFL anymore because of, you know, the, the whole Colin Kaepernick situation with Germany against the NFL uh, and, and subsequent incidents that have shown, that has shown that the NFL is, still has the same problems that a lot of these uh, organizations have, these sports uh, organizations have, but I do want to make a video talking about one thing, all right? Um, I want to talk about the fucked up Hall of Fame uh, inconsistencies that you see with them, all right? Like, uh, I'm looking at the people who were inducted this year, okay? And a lot of people got in this year. And this is why I kind of side with Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders is arguably arguably the best cornerback of all time. And Deion Sanders feel like the creme, only the creme de la creme should get in. Only the players who dominated their position for years, like like guys that put their stamp in the league, he think those are the guys that should only get in. Uh, I, I might be a little bit more lenient. I can see certain guys who are, I think anybody that was, one of the best and dominated their position for the NFL, you know, career is a little bit shorter. So I would say for at least five years or so, you oh. dominated your position five to six years in the NBA. I would say more of like a decade, but something in that time frame, right? So this is my thing. I'm looking at this list of people, right? Cause I want to make a video for everybody. Uh, Steve Atwater. Okay, Steve Atwater should have gotten to the Hall of Fame a long fucking time ago, man. Not on his 16th year of eligibility. Steve Atwater is one of the fucking beasts. He was an absolute beast at his position. Eight-time Pro Bowler. This man, this man retired back in 99. Steve Atwater should have been in the Hall of Fame no later than 2000. What is the eligibility? Like five years? Or three years in the NFL, I can't remember. But this guy should have been at least on his second year. He should have been elected into the into the NFL Hall of Fame, man. Um, Isaac Bruce uh, was elected to the Hall of Fame. I think this was his sixth year of eligibility. I don't have a problem with Isaac Bruce getting in, um, although I think a guy like Dion might. But I don't have a problem with Isaac Bruce. But I do feel like if you put Isaac Bruce in the hall, then that opens the door for his longtime tandem partner, Terry Holt, with the Rams back in the 90s into the 2000s. I think Terry Holt put up numbers good enough to be in the hall, too. Uh, Steve Hutchinson, that's a no-brainer. Seven times, seven years consecutive, I think it was, pro bowler. Yeah, I don't have an issue with that. Now, Edrin James, I, I see him as, even though he did rush for 12,000 yards, right? And he led the league in, in, in rushing twice. But for some reason, I don't know what it was about Edrin James. I don't know what it is. He just never, he just never, like, screamed out Hall of Fame to me, man. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the numbers are do justify it, man. Um, I think he was a four-time Pro Bowler. I don't know. I don't know about Edwin James, man. Maybe, eh, maybe he is. Troy Palomalu, yeah, he's definitely a Hall of Famer. All right. Uh, let's look at these guys' resumes. Look at Edwin James right quick. He was a rookie of the year. I got maybe I, maybe I'm, I'm maybe I gotta look at it again. He was a rookie of the year in 1999. Captured Russian titles his first two years. Um, all pro three times. All AFC four times, selected the NFL's all decade team in two thousand. Both the four Pro Bowls. It was four, okay, sir. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess so. I guess so. 
it's kind of borderline to me, man. Um, this is my thing, okay, with the coaches. Bill Cowher. Now, Bill Cowher went to two Super Bowls, but in one, he had a 62% career winning percentage, I believe it was. Uh, 149 victories uh, 90 against 90 losses. He succeeded the legendary Chuck Knoll back in 1991. And um, I guess he's a Hall of Fame coach, but he's not one of the top names that pop in my head when it comes to Hall of Fame coaches. If anything, I think that his successor, Mike Tomlin, has been even more successful. Mike Tomlin, until recently, really didn't have a losing record or a failing record. And I think what Mike Tomlin was able to do this past year, despite having one of the worst rosters in Pittsburgh Steelers history, is remarkable. He has a higher career win percentage, and he's already uh, matched Bill Cowher with Super Bowl appearances and wins. All right, so I think if people can refer to Bill Cowher is a Hall of Famer, then God damn it, Mike Tomlin will be a Hall of Famer as well. All right? Um, I think Bill Cowher has 149 wins. Uh, excuse me, Bill Cowher has 149 wins. Mike Tomlin has 133 wins. Um, so, within the next two seasons, Mike Tomlin should surpass Bill Cowher in wins while still having fewer losses. Um, Jimmy Johnson, the coach, yeah, I, I see him as a Hall of Famer, all right? Steve Sable, uh, president of NFL Films, yeah, died tragically several years ago. Um, yeah, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Paul Tagliabue, blew, uh, prior to the current commissioner, with the commissioner of the NFL for a long period of time, um, yeah, well, I, I see that. And some of these other guys, I don't know who the hell they are. All right, but at the end of the day, man, I just think that when it, when it comes to all of these leagues, the NFL, Major League Baseball, the NBA, the Hall of Fame has become very watered down. It's become very watered down. You know, like, I understand the steroid issue. I get it, I understand it, but it's hard for me to take Major League Baseball's Hall of Fame seriously. It's hard for me to take Major League Baseball Hall of Fame seriously when you let in a guy like Larry Walker, who primarily is in the Hall because he was able and lucky to play in Coors Field, where outside of Coors Field, Coors Field he hit like 280 for his career, but in Coors Field he hit 380. And hit most of his home runs. Um, it's just hard for me to, to see a league that has let Larry Walker in the Hall of Fame. But meanwhile, Roger Clemens and Barry Bonds most likely will never be elected to the Hall. Now, fortunately, both of them are in the upper 60 percentile when they're doing these votes. But at it's not really soaring. It's not like they're at 70%. Um, it's, 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 it's just ridiculous, man. Like, there's no way I could take Major League Baseball's Hall of Fame seriously. No matter how much they want to punish these guys, at the end of the day, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Pete Rose, those guys are legitimate Hall of Famers. They should be in the Hall of Fame. And any league where you got those guys omitted, but you put people in like Larry Walker, who is a fine player, and then you have guys like Bill Mazeroski, who is a fine player, but come on, man. You, you can't compare the two. It's ridiculous. Um, and then, like, you know, the NBA, which is more my speed, I don't understand how you could have Tracy McGrady. Look, if you got Tracy McGrady in the Hall of Fame, that's fine, okay? Tracy McGrady for a while was 
one of the best scorers, if not the best scorer in the league for a span of like maybe two years when he led the league in scoring. But if you're going to put Tracy McGrady in the Hall of Fame, I implore the NBA to put in Tom Chambers. Okay? Uh, I implore the NBA to let in Walter Davis. Because these are some guys who aren't in the Hall of Fame that if you're going to put Trace McGrady and some of these other guys in, then you got to put those guys in. I think Walter Davis should be in the Hall of Fame. If you're going to lower the bar that much because you want to fill a quota, you know, that that's just doesn't make any sense to me, man. But um, tell me what you guys think, man.